Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today we're taking a look at my Ruger GP100. Let's see here we go. I have the original box came in. I've had this for a very long time. I've had this gun for over 13 years. In those 13 years of experience I have untold thousands of rounds of 38 Special and 357 Magnum for this gun. So with that I feel pretty confident I give an opinion on it. So we're going to open the box up. This is a, I guess, cylinder lock. You actually put it around this inside the cylinder. Can't close it. Looks like a little uh, brass or copper pin. Don't know what that's for. Chamber, is that a chamber flag? Hmm. I have these things so long, I'm not even quite sure what all these pieces are for. A little bit of literature. This is supposed to stay in the box. It got stuck here. So what I'm getting at is the box itself really isn't all that important. I'm really interested in the revolver. The Ruger GP100 itself. The box is not all that useful. I really don't tend to use the box very much at all. However, a little interesting uh, side note. This says $545. Wow, I wish I could get a new one today for that price. Like I said, I've had this one for over 13 years. Today, if you get something like this, it would be about eight or $900. So, inflation, what are you going to do? Let's have some nice decoration here as we kind of... Uh, let's pull that holster in there. This is the holster I got with my Taurus 44 Magnum revolver. I do like it. And oddly enough, it fits this gun too. Fits pretty well. A little loose. But if I ever had to use this in a holster, I'd use that. So, we'll leave it on the table for now. We have the Ruger GP100. This is made by Ruger. I think made since about 1985. Uh, this particular version is a 6 inch stainless steel barrel. It comes with the whole grips. It is a double or single action revolver, hammer fired. I think all most revolvers are. Uh, six rounds in the cylinder, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go back to the front. We'll start with the back. We'll start with the grip. This is the grip the gun came with. It looks like it's intended as a right handed grip because you have the, the Ruger logo here. It comes out a little more. It's a little more. Um, again, something comes out a little more. It's a little more recessed on this side, applying that it's supposed to be a right handed gun. Although you can't hold it with your left hand. It's not terrible, but this grip is contoured to be a, a, a right-handed gun. I'm not a big fan of finger grooves on guns, but it does work. It has really good rubber texturing all the way around. Um, and this is the grip it, the gun came, came with. It's very comfortable. Rubber on revolvers are probably the best, because if you put wood on there, wood's going to look nice. But... Rubber does a much better job at soaking up recoil on a gun. I've Over the years, I've taken grip this off, put other things on. I think this really is the best one. Just having a full all-rubber grip just does the best job at soaking up that recoil, which isn't too bad. Considering this gun is so heavy, I think this gun is like three pounds. Uh, whatever ounces that is, uh, it's quite hefty. We've got trigger guard, trigger. It's all nice stainless steel. Hammer. I remember someone mentioning that this is kind of rough, or this was these edges were kind of sharp on their example. But this was pretty good on mine. Like I said, save check real quick. This is double or single action, so you could fire like that. And the double action pull is pretty smooth. I think out of the box as a stock gun, that's probably as smooth as you're going to get on a revolver. And I've had it for, like I said, 13 years, so long that. This was rougher when I got it. It smoothed out a little bit. The single action is incredibly crisp. Very light, very crisp. Again, as good as a trigger as you'll probably get from like a standard production revolver. The cylinder release is right here. This is more of a push button. You push it in. The cylinder come out. Sometimes uh, you'll have a push button or sometimes I think you pull on certain Colts. This is the push button. 
it may be just a tad bit small, but it works very well. It's very positive. And uh, I've, kind of, I've kind of preferred just because I'm so accustomed to it. Cylinder, like I said, six shots of either 38 Special or 357 Magnum. Ejector rod. Because this is such a large gun, the cylinder comes out very far. And sometimes on smaller revolvers, um, you have certain trouble where the cylinder will be kind of close to the frame. And when you hit the ejector rod, cartridges and spent casings can get stuck. Not on this. Hit it, everything flies out. I like it when the ejector rod is also shrouded by the barrel. Just like it. The sights are fully adjustable. Not truly blacked out sights. I guess it's more of a clock sight picture where you have that rear sight that has a little kind of U white outline and the front sight right there. Uh, I like it. I know today, sorry, uh, Ruger has a lot of options that come with fiber optic sights, but when I bought this 13 years ago, uh, that wasn't. Front sight is somehow pinned in place here. I'm not trying to remove that. But on this particular example, I don't feel the need to change anything. These sights are actually pretty good. I said six inch barrel. We have those full lugs. I'm uh, contending with this tripod in a little trouble. This, this full lug. I like this. I like when I get when you don't have like a contouring. Sometimes in certain guns you'll have it kind of trimmed out. While this does add weight, I think it looks very attractive and I like it. Excuse me. This these. Nope. I was going to sneeze there. Sorry. 357 Magnum Ruger GP100. Take a look at some of the markings here. It's, I guess it's a seal number. Ruger logo. Not a whole lot on this gun. You have glare reduction cuts here. I think on the left side, let's see, we got. Uh, before using gun, read warning instructions manual available free from. Ruger, Newport, New Hampshire. Uh, I don't care for all that when manufacturers put all that stuff on their guns. So if, if, if you can get a good look at the gun, sometimes the glare kind of gets in the way. This gun has a little bit of nicks, so some wear here. It has scratches and nicks over time. It's been used. Not really abused. I think I treated it pretty well. Not really abused, but it has been used. It's been dropped. It's been shot untold thousands of times mostly 38 special I would say uh, the mix between 38 special and 3 for 7 magnum loads is probably like 5 or 6 to 1 just because it's cheaper and if I'm shooting paper I don't care all that much lately I've been shooting a little more 3 for 7 magnum there's adjustments for the sights let's see if I can figure out where it goes are they marked? I'm kind of pulling this off and on camera. I'm trying to see where the adjustment goes. I assume screwing down lowers the sight. And I assume screwing, you know, rightward moves the front sight to the left. However, it's not really marked. I haven't really had to adjust these sights in a very long time. So the Ruger GP100, how does it perform? Well, I say it's there's a lot of weight to the gun. Shooting either 357 Magnum or 38 Special. But shooting 38 Special is very pleasant. It's like shooting like a 9mm handgun. It's, it's not nothing, but it's very pleasant. And I shot a little bit of Magnum loads today, and it wasn't so bad. It was a little loud. Admittedly, I, I, I don't shoot a whole lot of 357 Magnum loads. I tr I'm trying to do a little more recently. Um, also have a little trouble finding the ammo. But even in 357 Magnum, I think it's just more of a, a matter of being allowed and really a whole lot of recoil. Let me get some targets out. I could say it's an accurate gun, but I can also just show you. So, what do we got here? What did I write? This is 38 special, 7 yards, double action. Pretty good. I don't know. 38 special, 10 yards, double action. Pretty good. 38 special, 25 yards, single action, 25 yards, standing, unsupported, 
just casual shooting. I think I'd say it's pretty good. I'd say that's pretty darn good, and the gun can do it. So these targets over here, this is 357 Magnum single action, and honestly, jumping from 38 Special to 357 Magnum, um, you know, it's a big jump in power. I'm not sure the exact velocity increase of 357 Magnum over 38 Special, but it's a lot. And when you jump from 38 Special to the Magnum loads, um, it can be a little jarring. So admittedly, if I want to get this level of performance using this cartridge, 357 Magnum, I need a little more practice, honestly. You know, that's just being truthful. So the gun, if you do your job in either single action or double action, can be supremely accurate. The gun's fun to shoot. Never had any reliability problems with this gun. I've never really cleaned it all that well, like as far as like a detail cleaning, taking the gun really apart but into individual pieces and really getting in there and cleaning it well. Just as well as I can clean it from the outside while fully assembled, just clean everything down as best I can, run bore stakes through the cylinders in the chamber, wipe it down, put a little oil in here, you know, in here maybe, uh, maybe a little oil in here sometimes. Um, that was really it. So in the thousands and thousands of rounds I put through this gun. Um, I've never, I don't remember any problems as far as reliability goes. It's been shot. It's been shot. So what kind of accessories can this gun use, you know, and honestly, the reason I even bring up accessories is because there's very little. You might put another grip on it. I mean, it's possible to put different sights on here, but, you know, this, what, what, what would you replace these sights with? Maybe the front sight? If anything, just paint this yourself. Paint this orange or white. And like I said, I think the grip itself is probably the best you're going to get. So just leave it. So as far as changing the gun, um, I don't see the need to change anything on this gun. Wow, it's a little dirty there. Now there are things that come along with the gun, like speed loaders. Speed loaders are cool. The idea of a speed loader is that you have, instead of having all the ammo loose, you have it kind of in this little clip here. You stick it in, then you're going to push, turn, take out the cartridges. Then close it up, shoot 0 to 6, pull it out, smack it, I'm going to get it there. And you're done. For whatever reason, I'm missing a couple of these. Speed loaders are cool, but if you go into the range and you load the speed loaders, it's just as easy to load the cylinder. But you know, you can bring a couple to the range with you and load them, load them there. Also, like I said before, speed strips. Where if you were carrying a gun, not necessarily this gun, it's kind of a big gun. But if you were carrying a gun, instead of having them a rounded example, you can have it flat, and you basically just rip these off. This is kind of a hard rubber. And I've said before, I don't know how many times you can kind of do this before this wears out. So I tend not to use the speed strips. Uh, I think this speed loader is cooler. And these are a little hard to load. But they, they would work. I mean, you know, again, maybe carrying something a little smaller, you, you could carry these around in your pocket. You can have one or two speed loads. So what is a gun like this, particularly this example of firearm? What is this good for? And I think first and foremost, this is really a range gun or a competition gun. Um, something to bring to the range, have fun with. It's a little big for a concealed carry gun. There are different barrel lengths you can get. I think all the Ruger GP100s are, are going to be this size. Like, there's no like smaller Ruger GP100. You just be, you're talking about a different model. You're talking about the SP101. That's more of a carry sized gun. The Ruger GP100 is a full size revolver. But you can get different barrel length. I think there's a 2, a 3, a 4, a 6. I think there is also a 5 inch, which is not as common. But I think the more, more well, the more common barrel lengths on this example seem to be 4 inch and 6 inch. If I do anything over, I might see if I can get a 5 inch version. Because this is just a tad bit front heavy. Although holding it, it's not too bad. But maybe if you're really holding it for a long time at the range and shooting a lot of rounds, this, this might get a little front heavy. So if I could do it all over again, I might just shave an inch off this barrel, get a 5-inch version. 
I feel like that might be like the perfect barrel length. However, six inches is fine. I think six inches is fine. Um, I mean, maybe like a backup hunting uh, firearm. Like if you were hunting in the woods or something like that, or deer hunting, and you wanted something a little more powerful on your side in case something jumps out, you know, that'd be a good gun. So the same thing for the my Taurus 44 Magnum, kind of the same thing as a, uh, you know, have this on your side in the holster. And if something jumps out, you know, pull it out. Six shots of th of three for seven Magnum loads ready to go. I can see that. Uh, I don't think it's a good home defense gun only because the fact that number one, very loud. Uh, but more importantly, you can't put a weapon light on this easily. There might be something somewhere where something clamps on the trigger guard. But I think your best bet for a home defense gun is really a full-size 9mm handgun with some kind of weapon light attached. That's my opinion. Uh, I don't know if it's a primary hunting firearm. I don't know the legalities of doing things like that. Possibly. I'm going to say this is really a range gun, competition gun. If you want to push into other roles, you know, that's that's on you. That's my opinion. But for that, you know, a big, heavy magnum revolver at the range is just so fun to shoot. There's something special about shooting a revolver. How the cylinder works and it doesn't spin quite as well as, as my Taurus one. This is a little dirty. I better clean that out a little bit. Um, there's just something fun and magical, you know. Revolvers are so simple because the, the magazines themselves are integral to the gun. You don't have to worry about magazines because the magazine's right here and you can't lose it. So, capacity is limited, obviously. Limited six rounds. But I just find them so fun to shoot and they are so accurate. Sometimes you forget that single action firearms can be supremely accurate. And this revolver is supremely accurate in single action. Out shooting most of your polymer striker fired guns. Says me. So I guess that will do it. This is Stephen from the Even Stephen channel. Highly recommending the Ruger GP100. I put thousands of rounds in this gun. Owned it for many, many years. Never gave me any problems. And my only complaint about today is that it seems so expensive. For eight or nine hundred dollars, you have to pay for this today. It just seems like a lot. But um, from what I can see, maybe it's still worth it. Anyway, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel. Thank you for listening to my, my rant and rave. Uh, please do all the like, share, and subscribing, the YouTube stuff. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, and goodbye.